Hey guys, Menace here for the Fast Hosts Power Tournament. We guys are bringing you guys live coverage from the group stages, and uh, tonight we will be watching. It is the Purr Purr Kittens versus Ravon. Now, for one, I'm, th I'm guessing you guys are still thinking Purr Purr Kittens. Well, that's a real official name. Um, they did have another name. Organizations changed. They don't have a sp the team anymore, so they're stuck with Purr Purr Kittens. And uh, Ravon, I know, now the other guys are saying, but wait a minute, you've covered Ravon before. Yes, I have, I know. Uh, unfortunately, what happened was we were originally going to be covering the Eeriness versus Authority Gaming uh, match, and Eeriness did not show up. And it happened to be that I had these guys on my X5 message them, and they said, well, they haven't started yet, so I could jump in. And I thought, well, you know, some cover, even if it is the same team again, is better than no coverage at all. So, we are going to be covering this match up, which should be brilliant. Knife has gone in the favor of Ravon, and a quick little roster runner. Before we start, for the Ravon side, we have got Dedo, Record, Full, Nakey, and Dins. And then for the Purr Purr Kittens, we've got Have, Cappy, Vodkas, John Yo, which is John UK, and Muzor. I don't know why teams just can't get their names right. Seems like everyone is too scared to have their original nickname in, uh, in, in case of failing. Of course, as I said, guys, it was a little bit of an unexpected, so I do apologize if I stop talking every so often, as updating needs to occur in the background, unless I want to be out of here, if you guys get what I'm saying. Right, so the match is getting underway, and uh, we will be starting off with the Purple Kittens on the attacking side and Ravon on the defending side. Let's say go away with a scope. We're going to be having Vodka on scope, and his opponent will, of course, still be dead. A little check on the SMGs as Dins, Cappy, Full, and Muzo, and then the AKs, of course, Nike have Rickett and uh, John UK. So uh, with the scopes here, we see Vodka's going for a little bit of a long distance shot into the A side. Nothing is going to be connecting as on the side. Oh, he does spot two SMGs on that side. He's going to be relaying that to his teammates. Cappy and Muzo both grab a frag. And it seems that the Purple Kittens have got a very good start so far. Nike getting caught a little bit off guard, but somehow lands the shot there onto Muzo and does fall back to the cover of his teammates. Cappy moving forward. As uh, we do see the Purple -pur Kitten start moving into moving into this bomb side, they have pretty much cleared it out. They doesn't look like they're expecting many nades. They still got great smoke coverage. Plays from Raven Arsenal moving into the front of the A side. John Yo coming in from behind does take out Rickert, and this will mean that it's all up to Dedo. One versus three. Lovely way to start off the game for him. And uh, can he do it for his team? No, he can't. Vodka is going to be on his case. First round going towards the. PPK? Can we, can we, are we allowed to shorten it already? I think we are. The PPK, with the, with the random smiley faces as uh, the names. Going with Vodka once again, he has decided to go over towards the B side. Let's see if uh, anything changes for him. Doesn't seem so. He's going to be throwing a nade over towards the scope jump. Try and catch anyone off guard there. Dedo is very luckily though, not anywhere near it. And will be able to get away scotch free while the rest of his team tries to hold off that A-side, defending it. Both the SMGs are working very well together, one covering Cafe, one covering the front A-side. A very standard style of defense for uh, the defending team, or at least the defending SMGs. We do see that Hav is still stuck in Underlook, and I will mention at this point, I have played with Hav a couple of times, me and him are good mates, and he always gets stuck there. I kid you not, TeamSpeak goes ridiculous when I just start yelling at him for being stuck in Underlook. 
So I, I will refer back to it a couple of times, and we can all have a little bit of fun with it. But f at this time being, though, he is pushing forward with it. SMG has got an AK with him. The bomb is still in underlook. Spray coming in from behind. Pulls out the AK. Does anything connect, though? Does seem so. And he will, unfortunately, have to fall back. Johnny UK takes out Nike. Have still found, trying to find the frag there on taps. Wasting his time, in all honesty, as uh, Phil is really winning out this baiting little situation going on. Looks like the players are pushing up onto Phil. He is getting a little bit cautious here. Does get a frag onto Vodka, but unfortunately Johnny is going to be the one to get the reply frag. There's... Ooh, that was so close. If you have the run for that frag, I don't think they would have actually gotten the bomb down. And uh, from what looked like a very strong rev on defense, seeing that the PPK or Purple Kittens were able to just sneak in that little bit extra and uh, start finding all the picks there all over the A-bomb site. Both the SMGs went down and nevertheless we're able to get into the bomb site. I did think that took quite a bit too long and uh, hopefully they'll be able to clear it up in the next round. Third round now, we see Hav once again going into Overlook as he tries to take up his defending position. Phil and Dead are both grabbing frags. As a uh, seems nothing too obvious is coming out from either of these teams. Pretty much standard defense uh, while, yeah, you see, this is, I'm, I'm going to refer back to it, you see, underlook. Now finally moving forward now, 45 seconds into the run, have trying to get into that A side, no one has the bomb, they have left it there, which I do feel is a little bit of a problem, because I feel any ground you make, you should be able to take the bomb with you. Have peeking out, spots a player on single palm, Vodka gets a frag on full. Nike takes out Have though, and oh, Rickett coming in from behind, Actually lands a tag there onto Vodka through mid. Dead with the Deagle over the wall. And Vodka will go down to bring it to a 2-1. And we go Ray 1 waking up a bit as they grab the first round here in the first map of the first game of this group stage. Actually, it's not the first round of the group stage. It's like the, the third or so round. Second for these guys. Anyway, it's one of the round stages. It's the first map, though, which is very important. They're going to be playing best of three, so even if... The Rave on side lose this map, or vice versa. The other team has got a chance to bring a one to bring it back, which I do feel is a very fair system to use. As a, if if you're not strong on one map and it's all based on one map, then well, you you lose on your worst map, whereas you could win on every other map. So best of three, going to be utilised in the group stage. As it will move on then to a double elimination, best of could be one, could be three. I have not confirmed yet. Full hiding away from a nade. So it drops right on him near statue. He will be able to brush that one off luckily. Muza with a deagle coming out there. Takes out Full all the way from behind. No doubt Full was not expecting someone to be all the way back there. Nike is now your last man standing. We do see Purple Kittens. Looks like they could be going towards B. I would have expected they could or they should have. As they knew Nike was an SMG. But it feels like... Oh, I mean they just worked in their numbers. Utilized it in their advantage. And then pushed into that bomb site. Over at the scoreboard, there's nothing too interesting as of yet. Nike and John UK both standing out on five frags at the moment. While well, Rickett not having the best of games or best of starts. But who can blame him? It's the first game. You have to get into your rhythm. Vodka peeking out from Cafe. Does spot Dedo. Not going to be landing anything as Hab's Nate takes out full. Dedo does get a frag onto Hab though. As Hab goes down for all his nading trouble. Vodka flying around through Cafe. With none of his shots connecting, Nike has spotted someone there on Garage, takes out Cappy. And now we'll move over onto that B, sorry, onto that A bomb site. He knows Vodka's in Cafe and, wow, in rather good shot, takes him out. Tries to go for the third, unfortunately um, is out of ammunition and wasn't able to pull out his deagle in time. John Yoda's lost man standing, he is being surrounded by these Ravon players. They should not just run in all together, though, as well, we know what happens in COD. It could happen. Fifth round going there in favor of Ravon, and that'll mean that it's only one round difference between the two teams. Do we have an SMG rush? Do we, do we, do we? Cappy is absolutely gunning it towards the cafe area. Moosel's pushing through mid. Of course, he'll be able to cut off anyone going towards the garage side. Although it looks like these SMGs have gotten into a pretty fast style. I wouldn't call it, uh, you know, a direct rush as per se. Cappy with his deagle takes out full. Have on to Nike. This is looking good for the Purple Kitten so far. 
As Dylan's guns down vodka. And it's always bad when an AK takes out your scope. He's on out trying to find someone on the double palms area. Unfortunately, he is looking in the wrong direction. Ooh, Dedo actually peeking out. Didn't have much choice to do though. That he needed to try and clear a little bit of that bombs area. Or oh, sorry, of the palms area. We see Muzo finding two frags before going down to Dins. Dins now your last man standing as Hav and Cappy are alive in that A-side. Bomb is down. Time is not in his favor. He has flashed over the garage wall. Ooh, flies over the wall, but Hav is waiting there on the bin wall. And he'll be able to take out Dins. Long range with an AK. It's where it always comes in so handy. Rick head on the... Oh, I... I keep being drawn to uh, to Rickett as he, he's not doing the best. Let's give him some love from the spectator's point of view. See if he can maybe pick up another frag yet. He's covering the midside. Not being too aggressive. Does move out into the middle of the street with that smoke, but falls back just as quickly. Takes a Cappy as Cappy tries to go over the garage wall. And uh, seems to be very confused. I mean, he ran up into the street, ran back to the the market stall behind the wall back into Bialy finally came out again you know I just think it's just a little bit too much from him maybe we should just calm down a bit and just keep his aim on a spot full takes up Vodka though as Ravon start being a little bit pro uh, aggressive peeking out where they usually wouldn't Dun's taking out have John UK is your last man standing he has pushed all the way to the B side with the bomb and at the moment Rayvon are not expecting it. They have got no players over towards the B site. They have got a player on the double palms area. John still has 40 seconds. So by any means, he could still go and peek out towards double palm. He'd make loads of noise. I uh, don't think this was the best he could have played this one. Stedo just messing around with him at the moment. All his shots have missed. And rightfully so, suicides. I think that was probably the better thing to do. In, uh, in that situation. You just get to that point where you realize that anything you are trying is not going your way. And uh, in the end, just decided to end it all. So for some way, we do still see the Purple Kittens holding on to their one round advantage. And uh, it looks like they will We'll be keeping the edge. Raybon once again down to only three members as this B push comes out here from the Purple Kittens. Looks like it definitely caught the Raybon side off guard. Falls your last man standing. He is over towards the B side. His led his position no. And uh, it seems the Purple Kittens are pushing forward for some of the odds reason. Falls. I want to say a terrible aim, but that's kind of rude. But that was pretty bad. I think he could have done better on that. I'm I think a lot of people could have done better than that one. But again, it was in the it was in the moments. It happened. We can't hate him for it. But uh, definitely should have had a little bit more spot on aim in that position. Vodka wanting to go for that mid through the window wall bang. Uh, instead gets blocked by his teammate, and rightfully so. As he peeks over towards A, takes out Nike. And now Campy can push in a little bit quicker there into that A site. Dins shuts down Campy though. Rickard onto Muzo. Dins gets himself another. And here we have some momentum rolling on for the Ravon side. John UK stuck defending his backside as there is a flanker trying to come in from behind. He does get heavily tagged up from an SMG on the front of the wall using his Deagle. Now who is that? That was Dins. Dins rather just going to stay in here on the A side. Ooh, you know he's going to peek up. Spots of Vodka on that mid street. Pulls out his Deagle once again. Can he close off this final kill onto... The player that is John UK doesn't seem so. John's nowhere near the bomb. 45 seconds left on the clock. Spray coming in from so many directions for him to fire back at. And Phil will be the final one to get the frag there. Brings it back to 5 4 once again. What, one round difference? I said, I mean, it's one round difference, but they're still winning. I mean, the scores don't depict it. Or I say the scores don't depict it. We have Dunn sitting on 10 frags, which is three more of the oh, three more frags and the highest fragging player on the purple kitten side although we do see a much more even kill spread on the PPK side and with that they can definitely hope that the teamwork or I'd say definitely hope <laughs> I am Mr. Oxymoron this evening 
Dins pushing out a campfire. Has that SMG, of course, Deagle next to him, so he'll be able to put down some long range fire if he wants onto John UK, who is covering their backside. Oh, is it actually vodka? It is vodka. And Vodka's going to fall back towards the B side. It seems that the Purple Kittens team are a little bit undecided as to where they're going. John UK is actually in Overlook, making sure that no one is pushing out on their street and rotating behind his teammates. Comes under some fire, but luckily we'll be able to get out of that one and regen his health. <laughs> and comes out of Underlook just to watch his teammate. Brilliantly catch a nade. I don't think he could have caught that nade any better. Dens grabs the frag they want to have. And now it is all changed into favor of the Ravon team. Purple Kittens now one member down compared to their opponents. And with so little time left, Ravon are going to be moving in onto this bomb side. We just want to make sure that the Purple Kittens team do not get that bomb down. It does actually go down. Now, of course, unlike CSS or any game like that, it doesn't actually benefit them to get the bomb down besides the fact that they would lose the round. So uh, trying to sneak in that bomb defuse and uh, hoping to get into some cover didn't work out in the end. And with that, we will see Ravon tying it up. And uh, after 10 runs, this is the first time that these two teams are tied. Which for Ravon will be a very good sign as they are on the defending side that did have the map choice. The map choice? Side choice. Did they have the side choice? I think they won the knife. Correct me in chat if I'm wrong. Feel free to use that, utilize that. Cappy throws his nade out towards Bins as uh, he will find an opponent on single palm. He doesn't peek it out too much. He's got to be careful in that position. It is very easy to fall to the player on single palms. Nike takes out half as Full is still peeking over the front end side. And this is that problem that, you know, I want to bring it up. I uh, keep pressing the wrong player though. We have got two players stuck in the Underlook area. And it is so difficult to get out of this area once you've been surrounded by the uh, by the enemy team. Ricka comes in to take out Vodka. Nearly lands the second frag there onto Cappy, although I think it's only a matter of seconds before he does go down. And so he does. And Raven will be getting their first round advantage over the Purple Kitten side. Vodka going to be making his way over to the single palms area, or hotel palm. Trying to get a nice little quick rush to spot the scope. Dedo, unfortunately, nothing connects from his end. And he will be having a peek over towards the cafe area. No one rushing out of it just yet. Although his teammates in front of him are seeing loads of action. Muzo and Vodka coming alive. Both get themselves a frag. And now Ravon seems to be slipping Loads of action coming in. John UK gets himself a frag. Vodka gets a nade. All up to Dedo. One versus four. Kind of like a replica of the first run. Well, just with one more player. Which I doubt anyone would be rooting for. John UK is going to finish it off onto Dedo. Takes it to 6 6 at the halftime score. I kind of feel both of the teams are happy with that one. More so that the Purple Kittens get some, you know, warm up. It was the Ravon side that chose their. Um, that won the knife and chose their side. So being on defense. Uh, they might have wanted the advantage, but then again, it's not like they're behind. So uh, it's nearly like a fresh start just with after having some practice rounds. Looking over at the scoreboard, we do see Dunn sitting on 13 frags and uh, a rather large kill spread of, of 8 kills between their top and bottom player while over on the Purple Kit inside, there's only well, two round, uh, sorry, two kills difference between their top and bottom player. Cappy takes out full, does spot another player, as it seems that Raven are taking it rather slow out of the, the spawn area. Cappy's already all pushing up for the flank. Dedo still sitting in the hotel area, he's got Rickett for some extra cover. Nike sitting in mid. As have does want to peek out, I wouldn't suggest it for him though, as he is the only one on A, and he's definitely got to keep that in mind. Rickard spots someone there in the B-Link area. Some of his rounds connect. Unfortunately, Cappy's going to be able to get out of that one and regen his health. The lovely thing that is COD 4. Remember the days of COD 2, we had to try and pick up health. And each death, I believe, only had 20 or 25 hit points. Little med pack that dropped. John, your lads, loads of tags down to Nike. 
And uh, will fall back to covering his teammate Hav in that A side. It is a three on three. Cappy takes out Nike. The attack from Ravon being diminished. Yes, dead is now the only man alive. He is an underlook. And like I mentioned so many times on this map, if uh, you're stuck in underlook, it is so difficult to get out of there. It's trying to peek around the corner. There's a player behind the counter. It is Cappy. And Cappy's going to get the one. Or he's going to land that final frag. And bring Purple Kittens that one round into the lead once more. Which I definitely th feel is just like oh, that that relief you get when you when you pull that one round into the lead. It is unmistakable to anything on earth. Cappy gets caught up by an as he pushes in towards the A side, although Rickard's going towards the B area with this bomb. It seems like a split and pick at the moment. They've got three players over towards B, one still sitting towards spawn and one teasing around at A. Although you could kind of call it a B push. I say kind of in the sense that the majority of the players are going towards B. I mean, disregard the fact that I didn't mention the bombs going B. Now pushing up the street, being slow and meticulous to check as many spots as he can. Lands a nice little double tap headshot there onto John Yo. Seems that head bobbing does not affect him and only me. And with that, we'll move towards the A side. We do see Dins pushing out a cafe. Takes out Hav. Vodka's your last man standing. Golden Eagle, Golden Eagle and M40 does land a frag there onto Nike. And I will say Vodka is known by me to be rather quick on the trigger. So I wouldn't put it past him to be able to bring this one back. No. <laughs> Timing like that, though, just kills all hope. As he does try to throw out a smoke, but unfortunately he gets peaked at the, the most opportune time and gets taken out. Dinscar is sitting on 14 frags, definitely doing something right for his team. He's taken away with him. He's going for a nice little rush here out of the B-Link area. Solid Eagle in hand, and there we go. Ravon, wake up. Nike starts with a plus 10. Dins quickly picks up two frags and halves your last man standing. And I'm pretty sure he's still calling to his teammates saying uh, what bomb site the enemy is attacking. And uh, is <laughs> one versus four. All of his bullets miss. And subsequently goes down to it. Raybon take the lead here for the first time on this map. Could it be more things to come though? I want to follow away here with Dins once more. Seem to have a very good round in the previous round. That's it. That's take a little bit slower this time. It seems that the split and pick situation is working for Raybon. Playing some players on mid. Some over towards the B. One on A. And uh, Din's are going to go find more frags. Maybe it's just the weakness they found within the pur the pur pur kittens team. So I'm trying to sound as manly as I can, saying pur pur kittens. And knowing these guys, they probably chose it just to just to annoy me. Full peaks around the corner of the bin on the B bomb side. Takes out John Yu as Nike gets himself a frag there onto Muzo. And now Dedo with a scope onto have Cappy and Vodka. You lost two standing. Vodka very. Oddly missing a shot there that I would have said was a little bit easier for him to get. La lands an aid there onto Phil trying to get that bomb down. Although Dedo replies, takes out Vodka. Cappy is your lost man standing. He's heavily tagged up, has got the SMG. If he peeks over that wall, he will more than likely die as Dedo is watching the location. Does try and move forward a bit. Did Dedo spot him? I'm pretty sure he did. He's still staring in that location. Nike is watching the lower spawn building area and the mid street. So it's going to be difficult for Cappy to utilize any of the uh, B alley as he tries to push forward. Rick is waiting for him there at the top of the spawn building there on the little balcony. Nice little position as he catches Mr. Cappy off guard. And uh, not one to expect. Not a positioning to expect. Not one I would expect at least. Moves on the man of the AK. The man of many roles and adaptations. We'll be playing it in the spawn building at the moment before dropping down towards double palm. Dropping down towards double palm. Dr there we go. Dropping down towards double palm. And uh, we'll then go and lay up some covering fire here on Statue. Smokes has gone up. Is spraying through there. Some players saying it's pointless to play spray through smoke and rather just use a time more effectively. I say it's COD 4. Try your luck. Explosives planted. Now Musa slowly moving towards front air. There's a player on the street that's got to be very careful. It is Dedo. Lands a shot there onto Musa. Headshot more so. Den's going to close off onto Vodka. And Ravon pulling out a three-round lead. And this is the biggest lead so far in this game. 
I'd say the previous winners of that acclaim were the other team with two. But I'm pretty sure everyone figured that one out. Fuck, you're going to be covering that mid street. Might be overextending himself a little bit. Does then go back into a little bit of cover. Smokes have gone out. He does not choose to go for the spray through the smoke. Ooh, have good eyes on him as he takes out Nike. Flicks back towards Cafe preemptively sprays, but nothing is going to be connecting. Ravon is pushing over towards B. And have got the ability to rotate, though. Deto onto John UK. And this is where it gets dangerous because there's three players still alive for Ravon. And there's only one player for each bomb site alive for the per per kittens team. Rickard moving out towards front A. There is an SMG there in the form of Hav. And uh, he does know there's a player on mid shops. Ooh, but I don't think he's expecting the player on. Oh, wow. Vodka coming in for some massive cover onto, onto Hav. And it takes out Rickard as he jumps onto the, onto the garage wall. This, no doubt, will make things a little bit easier for him. I say that he is dead now. So I guess we can scratch that one. Raven should be able to just pick up this bomb, run towards that A-side, but Vodka actually gets his way into the A-side. I don't think uh, they're expecting to find him there. Phil does get taken out. And, oh man, Vodka lands a superb scope shot onto Dedo. To clinch the round, one versus two. Nice one to bring the morale back for his team. Brings back to 10-8. And uh, bringing that gap down to only two rounds. But what a shot from Vodka. What? It's just that play style, you know, that, that kind of thing. It's like, well, we're down. Might as well take the opportunity. Pushes forward with the AK. And um, I thought taking that preemptive AK spray onto the player on the mid-street car might have been a little bit too exposing. But uh, it worked out for him, so I guess whatever works. Vodka, here's a scope shot, fly right past him, does spot the or does spot Dedo in cafe, and now with that scope in hand, oh, pulls out the deagle, tries to kill Nike, but Nike unfortunately getting the better of him. Brings back to that three-run difference. 11 is your current scoreline, and as cute as Purple Kittens sound, they need to start being. A bunch of fierce lines and grabbing back these rounds that Ravon are taking out under them. Oh, Dedo takes a 98 hit damage shot right to the gut from Vodka. And Vodka is no doubt not going to be very impressed about that one, although he has spotted Dedo once more. Can he maybe get a second chance at the shot? Smokes have gone up. And with that, Vodka's nade is going to go out. Does connect with Dins. But not before Dins does get himself a frag. Moves or gets himself to Nike sitting on the mid street trying to watch a rotate. He should be able to spot a play rotating any second from Double Pump. He's heard loads of noise. And oh, <laughs> Cappy with the superb nade there onto Nike, predicting where Nike would be. Dead is not your lost man standing. And from what looked like a rather good position for the Ravon side, has definitely deteriorated into something not so favorable, which is a one versus three. It is slowly inching his way out behind that wall. And that fought, Vodka scoped it on his position. And that'll pull it back to 11-9. And with that, Ravon still holding to the lead. They only need another two more rounds to win the first map. And with that, uh, the Purple Kittens will be able to choose their map as the losers of the first map or the players that choose the second map. And so on and so forth. So if the Purple Kittens were to win the second map, then the Ravon side could choose the third. We do see half timing out as Dedo pulls the trigger. Really unfortunate from him. I hope it's not long lasting. Rickard making his way over towards the A side where the rest of his team are. Oh, Phil is poking around on this B side though. And I definitely think this is going to be the thorn in the foot for the Purple Kittens team. Phil moves forward. John UK takes out Rickard. John does get tagged up. Full carry on moving forward. I think he could be a little bit more aggressive. Dedo takes out Vodka. And this means that it is only the John UK guy left standing. John UK guy. Like, you guys know what I mean. This is one of those evenings. You guys just need to like fill in the rest of my sentences and try ignore the dribble. Put dribble filters on. 12-9. Only one more round to go for the Ravon side. And they will be taking the first map very in a very well-deserved fashion. Definitely after how much both of these teams have been fighting for it. 
have gets himself all snugly in cafe right next to the vending machine is full once again goes to peek around here on b and you know ever i mean we, we saw cappy trying to push out of b a couple of times go for the roadside in the early in the early rounds and you know cause loads of distraction from the b area but unfortunately that seemed to have stopped and uh full is now allowed free roam all over b which i definitely feel is a massive hindrance to uh the whole of Purple Kittens trying to defend both bomb sites. Full still trying to make some noise. Does spot a play just behind the wall. It is John UK. He'll go down. Dens gets himself a frag onto Vodka as Full now moves forward. He has got a teammate with him, but it doesn't seem like he's going to need it all that much as Dens gets himself a frag there onto Have. Have did get the frag onto Dedder though. Last player left standing is Cappy, and that's going to be a 39 scoreline on the first map here between Purple Kittens and Ravon in the Fast Host Power Tournament. Thank you guys for joining me for the first map, as uh, we will be giving these teams a little bit of chance to decide what the second map is going to be. It seems that they're kind of just all a dunno. Either way, guys, I have been Menace. Do check me out at forward slash Menace FPS on Facebook and at Menace on Twitter. You guys can check out everything Quad V related. Quad V on Twitter, Quad V on Facebook, and Quad V TV on YouTube. We will be uploading all our videos on demand, so you guys can go check out all our previous stuff. But for now, guys, that was the first map done, and we'll be right back with the second map.